Hello. So I've just finished reading this book here. Uh, It's called The Corrections. And it's by Jonathan (laughs) Jonathan Franzen. Uh, He's quite a well-known author, so you've probably heard of him before. But I'd... uh, been meaning to read this book for a while and I finally got round to it so I thought I'd just ramble away and give my thoughts so it might be helpful to read the blurb first The Lamperts Enid and Alfred and their three grown up children are a troubled family living in a troubled age Alfred is slowly losing his mind to Parkinson's disease As his condition worsens and the Lamberts are forced to face the secrets and failures that haunt them, Enid sets her heart on gathering everyone together for one last family Christmas. So, it just gives you a general idea. Essentially this is a book uh, about the tribulations of a dysfunctional family in the American Midwest. Uh, Alfred and Enid Lambert are probably the two most prominent protagonists in this. They're both in their 70s and the the novel begins with them flying out to New York to embark on a a rather long-awaited pleasure cruise and they meet their son Chip at the airport who is essentially bracing himself for that rather familiar weight of parental expectation. And then we're launched in from there as we learn about uh, this family through the mother, the father, and their three children. The youngest son, Chip, the eldest son, Gary, and their one daughter, Denise. And so we sort of go through them one by one and learn about them and hear about their lives and their failures and successes. And I suppose I was quite interested in this because I really, for one reason or another, am rather fascinated by the Midwest, by the American Midwest. It's always been something that uh, intrigues me. I think for a few reasons. Um, Perhaps the first is that I, uh, while you just hear so much about New York and LA and all these big cities in America, uh, but you never really hear uh, that much about everything in between. And so whenever a novel or a film is set in the Midwest, I, um, I'm just sort of more automatically interested because it's, for me at least, it's a bit different, feels newer, and, uh, and I would like to know more about that uh, section of the country, that vast, vast uh, area of the country. I feel it's rather unfairly ignored in popular culture, at least. And I think another reason I'm interested in the Midwest is there's 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 no um, there's no there's no um, Midwest in the UK. There's nothing that you can really compare it to here. We don't have an answer to the Midwest. We have the Midlands. <laughs> we have the Midlands, but that that's uh, I get the feeling that that's very different. Um, so. Yeah, the, for me, it's it's this great unknown, something else that I would like to um, learn more about. And then finally, despite what I just said, it being an unknown, it also there's also a, a sense of familiarity. So whilst I've lived most of my, or well, all of my adult life in large cities, I uh, was brought up in a small town. And so I, I had this sense of kinship, maybe you might want to call it, with the Midwest in that regard, in that I feel like um, 
it's not true for all of it, but there, there are a lot of small towns um, in that part of the country, and I come from a small town, and I like, I like the um, elements that make up small towns. I find them, um, well, let me put it this way, when I'm living in a big city, that city does not need me. I never feel really of any importance to the city. That city will keep grinding on and going and going, whether I'm there or not. I don't contribute. <laughs> I am nothing to that big city. It, uh, uh, it's, 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 a, it's almost a living, breathing thing itself. And it certainly doesn't rely on me to keep on functioning. Whereas with small towns, I feel like I do contribute to the life of a small town, albeit in a minor way, but still in a tangible way, a way that is not, uh, or in a way that I do not experience in a city. I get lost in a big city. I feel like uh, rather invisible, rather sometimes life can feel rather pointless in a large city. Um, and sometimes that is the draw. Sometimes that is exactly why people want to go to a big city, and I get that. I really do. It's partly why I was so drawn to the big cities I've lived in. But the opposite's true for small towns. I'm often drawn back to small towns because they feel more um, human. Um, they feel more as if there is a, a community. Um, and more like I can contribute in a meaningful, demonstrable fashion. Uh, but as I say, it will still be a small contribution. These places aren't so tiny that every decision and movement I make is uh, going to change all that much, but it still feels uh, um, relatively substantial. Anyway, these are some reasons why I think I'm so drawn to Midwest. I, I, there are also other mysterious reasons I have yet to unearth, I'm sure. <laughs> there are some questions for which we have no answers. And one of those questions is, why do I like the Midwest so much? I'm not entirely sure. But I am charmed by it. There are downsides to small towns, though, of course. Generally, they're less diverse. Um, just by definition, they're, they're going to be, aren't they? They're smaller. They, they, there's not going to be as much diversity in a small area. So that's not always good. Um, they can, they can sometimes, I'm, I'm speaking now more for where I live. So in the UK, definitely small towns can be, they can be less progressive than bigger cities, or they can be, um, they can take longer to be as progressive as a bigger city seems to me they always get there eventually but there's this weird lag or delay um, and that's well it depends on your politics but for me that's not something I enjoy that much about small towns so they have their pluses and minuses and I'm speaking very generally there are lots of small towns for which that does not apply but just generally speaking from from my point of view that's what I've encountered um, anyway, back to the book. The title of the book, The Corrections, is quite interesting. I think it, it refers quite literally to the financial corrections that were made at the end of the um, dot-com bubble. So when the dot-com bubble burst, uh, the markets crashed and a lot of people lost a lot of money. And that's what happens in this book. Uh, towards the end um, that's made quite clear but you can sort of feel it leading up to that throughout the book but the title also refers to the it's sort of a, it's a, sort of a metaphor it's a metaphor uh, for the various corrections we all make in all our lives um, as we live them we make mistakes the things we should have done could have done would have done uh, well, our lives are one constant correction after another, are they not? Um, and as a result, because of that viewpoint, this book has a 
bittersweet quality to it because yes, while you're making a correction you are fixing something that is wrong nonetheless there was something there that was wrong to begin with so it has this melancholy streak throughout it from beginning to end this is not a happy book by any stretch but I think it's true I think it's a, a, a book that contains a lot of truth in it and a lot of really um, uh, impressive moments of insight I suppose that's how to describe it um, so I like that that parallel there between um, this macro economic correction while simultaneously you've got these micro uh, interpersonal corrections and uh, lives that are going astray at the same time as everything the the edifice and everything that holds up and structures those lives also going astray and in need of corrections. And that was my reading of it. That was my reading of the metaphor, anyway. The economic aspect is clear from the book. Um, the metaphor, I'm assuming, is what was intended by the author. Um, and, uh, and there's also the, the parallel there between the two different kinds of lives and the different kinds of corrections you can have within those lives. For Alfred, he's a 70-year-old man. You know, he was a railroad engineer with a pension and loyalty to his company. And he embodies that old economic order of mid-20th century America, whereas his children, they're the complete opposite. They're the, they're the dot-com bubble children. They Denise, perhaps, exemplifies this perfectly she takes an old uh, f she buys up an old Philadelphia coal plant and converts it into a trendy and expensive restaurant that's a different kind of economic order that's a different way of looking at work and 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 it's really working out of the husk of what worked before and in a way making a mockery of it of it and doing something completely different that almost um denigrates the past and doesn't really doesn't really respect the past from which it came um, so it creates this strange uh, tension and uncertainty and actually a lot of people have called this a post 9-11 book even though it was written before 9-11 but it has that sense of he was an old way of doing things in America and now this massive thing has happened and life's going to be very different. There's going to be a pre and a post and um, but say goodbye to the pre <laughs> because that way of life has been blown to smithereens uh, and uh, the country the country was, it changed and it did change post um, dot com bubble but it also changed uh, following the uh, terrible attack on the Twin Towers. Uh, so this preempted that weirdly, spookily. Um, yeah, so I thought it was a really fantastic novel. I've not really done it. Um, not really done a very good job of selling it, I suppose. I made it sound quite miserable. And, but but I think it's an important novel. I do understand why it won the, uh, the National Book Award. That's what I think it do you think it well that was a pretty major book award in America I get it I it, ma it does make sense um, because it feels like it came out at just the right time the sort of turning point in America and, and it gives you a glimpse of of how that affected the lives of quite normal people uh, anyway I'll stop rambling and uh, maybe I'll do a few more of these books and of these reviews of books in the future as I get through quite a lot and um, it's quite nice just to get my thoughts out there while I'm relaxing you at the same time uh, but for now thank you for watching do give me an up thumb if you like this and do subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll catch you in the next one thank you very much <laughs>